what? We are live. Hot mic. Hot mic. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Hi. Hi. How is everybody? Wonderful. Yeah? Living the dream? So, this talk is called Simply Test Me, Past, Present, and Future. This is a little bit of a uh, reflection from the last five months, and I'll talk about why. <laughs> I am the Nerdstein. That is what I go by. Otherwise known as Adam Bergstein. I'm the VP of Engineering at Hook42. Uh, I will just kind of state that I consider Asheville one of my homes. Uh, this is like one of my places. Uh, I come down once a year. I schedule it around this camp. I bring my kids down for vacation. Uh, this is uh, it is always something I look forward to. It's a great feeling to be here once again. I thank all of you for attending. I appreciate it. It's late in the day, uh, but it's, it's awesome. Uh, so before I really start here, this picture is of the one and only Kevin Thal in a treasure for our community. I wanted to highlight a special milestone that he hit. You probably heard April talking about this earlier. But Kevin, who is this year's winner of the Aaron Winborn Award, the last DrupalCon, just recorded his 1,000th, 1,000, not 10, 1,000. Yes, presentation right here at DrupalCon Asheville recording Chris's talk. Awesome. So, What's really important to me, because Kevin and I are friends, but I think there's, there's something that goes kind of, it doesn't get discussed very often. Um, Kevin's work has reached countless people in our community. Like, immeasurable, right? Think of every single YouTube view of a video that he's posted. The recordings that he's done has done so much for our community on the whole. It's really special to think about, right? And this is at tons of camps, and people see it worldwide. That information is freely available. There is no like greater example of reach that we have in our community that's sitting right in front of us right now. It's really special. <laughs> Imagine, just for one moment, the amount of knowledge that people have gained alone just from watching the recordings that he's done, and the amount of contributions that wouldn't exist if people didn't get that knowledge. Right? So Kevin, thank you. You're welcome. You are awesome, and I appreciate everything that you do. Cheers. Part he sure will, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin is a bleep and a bleep. And... <laughs> All right, so here's a really high level outline of what we're going to talk about. And uh, this is again around Simply Test. Uh, you might hear me say Simply Test Me. That's the domain. I call the system <laughs> Simply Test. They're interchangeable, they're two things, right? Uh, so here's a very rough outline we'll be discussing. We'll look at like where, how did this all come about? Where are we at today? Where is this going to go? And hopefully we'll have time for a little bit of an open forum if anybody wants to you know, ask any questions, get any feedback on something, give some ideas. It's all good. All right, so let's start about how and why this system came to exist. Let's look at this. Let's frame it as a little bit of, say, a history lesson, why the project exists, and a little bit more in that kind of realm. So who's ever seen this lovely classic Drupal image, right? Yeah, okay. So uh, it is popular, but you know the really funny thing about this picture is this was created back when Mod X and Joomla were you know, really popular platforms that people wanted to actually use. So the weird thing <laughs> is one might say like, well, why is it still true today? You know? Like, it's, if, if this was created like 10 years ago, why, you know, 
what have we done to try to fix that? Uh, the one thing I will say is that I hope, personally, that this image is not evergreen. I hope that we do move past this someday, right? But we'll see. Uh, so the main claim here, right, it should be of no surprise to any single person in this room that plain and simply put, Drupal is hard. It's hard. And it makes sense, right? Because Drupal can do a lot. It's a highly extensible system. It's super powerful. It's flexible. And it's meant to solve really ambitious digital problems. So, hey, here we are. And this is natural in the tech technical space. You know, if you look at Drupal alone, you know, in any given day, you might be encountering something like PHP, Drush, Composer, CSS, JavaScript, HTML, Twig, testing frameworks, and guess what? That is not an exhaustive list. So you could hit so many different things in any given kind of corner or nook of Drupal, and that's a lot. It's a lot to maintain, a lot to learn. And let's just state, right, so even if you know the technology and you've figured it out and you've kind of gotten your hands dirty and you're starting to contribute and you're doing things, you're developing tools and stuff in Drupal, it goes and throws its own kind of conventions and best practices in the mix that, yeah, you got to go and learn that too, right? It's a tough space. It's a tough space. So Drupal itself, starting it especially, you know, it's pretty daunting. Uh, and the question that, you know, needs to be asked is really where do people go to start learning about Drupal? Where do they learn about the basic concepts of Drupal? How do they figure it out? Well, simply test me, right? We have a system that helps out with that. So simply test me is both an open source project and a service that I have now maintained for about six months. It was created and maintained by Patrick D, uh, username Patrick D. And the first commits on Drupal.org were registered back in 2012. So we're talking, you know, a long time ago. Probably almost seven years, getting close. The project itself is, is really a vital service uh, for the community. Uh, but it's one that really emphasizes on uh, lowering the barrier of entry for new Drupal users. And so this talk today is really me sharing what I've learned and then trying to talk about where this is going to be heading in the future. Uh, in its simplest form though, right, uh, Simply Test Me has a very basic web form online that you fill out some parameters, what you would like to test out in Drupal, and you click a button and a whole Drupal site gets spun up for you. That's all it is. Uh, and so that gives users the ability to test things out that they might want to try, uh, to play around, and they don't have to have things set up on their local. They don't have to go and set up infrastructure or servers or anything like that, right? That's basically what it's doing. These instances uh, remain up for about 12 hours, and then they're torn down. They're completely disposable. Uh, and the entire process that I talked about is completely automated for users. They don't have to really worry about anything except for filling out the form. That's the key part. It helps them. It does everything. It does all the magic. And while uh, the code itself is on uh, Drupal.org, so if anybody contributes to Simply Test, they can get commits on their, uh, on their user profile or do anything like that. Uh, so we can accept community contributions. The cool thing is it's not just a project. It also is an online service that runs that project. And it's run in a free and fairly open manner, right? So there's some systems administration and all this other stuff that kind of goes in with all of that. You know, it's not just code. The service has been spanning pretty much every major version of Drupal now since, uh, since Drupal 5. Uh, it's received ongoing updates and enhancements for every major version that's come out since then, 5, 6, 7, and 8, right? And it'll be around hopefully well into the future. And so that's a bit about Simply Test Me. Uh, in terms of just at a high level where it's been and where it's come from. The project motivations, though, uh, go a little deeper than what I described. Uh, but let me reiterate something. Its entire purpose, its sole purpose, is just helping people to use Drupal. Honestly. 
Um, the project is a bit of a, a labor of love. <laughs> That's where really where it stands. Uh, contributors like me, I don't use the service all the time, um, but I do it. I maintain the project uh, for goodwill. I do it because I think it has value and importance to people that need it. And I recognize that, in it's my opinion, that our community is stronger when we are supporting everybody in the community and not just, you know, the people that can set up a local system, right? And so um, this is a tool that's really meant to help people that are not long-standing contributors to Drupal. Uh, so the main motivation is really around a learning platform. This is supposed to be a way that people can try things out, learn concepts, test modules, check out a theme, all these different things. You can test different versions of core, you can try out a distribution if you want to see if it works for your needs. So it's a way to learn and explore and use Drupal in a kind of low barrier way. But one of the keys, one of the main motivations of the project is actually usability, right? You can't really be successful if you have a tool that's overly complex and no one knows how to use it and you can't do anything with it. So usability is a major focus or emphasis of what we try to do with this system. I really strongly desire that the tool provides an abstraction for all of the ugly stuff that's going on underneath the hood. And I want it to be an abstraction for all of that complexity to manage Drupal modules and themes and distributions, to install Drupal, to set up all the infrastructure for it. And I want this to be so painless to end users that they just have to push a button if they want. And there it is. Contribution is another goal for the system. And uh, Simply Test can install patches uh, very easily that you can test modules and try to install a patch from Drupal.org and see if it actually worked. So um, that provides a really easy way for new contributors to actually test out and move uh, patches to uh, RTBC, which is ready to be committed into the project. So Simply Test provides all of the infrastructure to say, hey, here's the list of the patch, put in the project, hit the button, and then you have a whole system spun up with, with the patch. It's pretty easy. So it does help contributors a lot, especially people that don't want to go through the whole uh, process of cloning down Git and installing the patch and then loading the local system, doing all that. You don't have to do it. You have a system that can do it for you. One of the key things is around automation though. So like every single thing that we strive to do is to automate as much as possible. We want it to be simple, right? So automation is a key cornerstone of what is uh, what we do with Simply Test. Back in uh, 2012, when the system was created, bear in mind that things like automation were just becoming a thing. People were really just starting to figure that out. Uh, the DevOps movement was really just beginning to become a reality in our community. Uh, Drush had its first release back in 20, 2007, which was five years before the first commit on Simply Test, but um, Drush was, at that point, really to me, it was only accessible for power users or people that you know, really got it, right? It's not uh, something that people fully understood at that point, how much it would benefit the community, uh, and it wasn't fully baked or feature rich at that point in time. Uh, but today's application does so much with automation, it's crazy. It does, uh, has automated tools for everything from the systems to the servers, the bash scripts, Drupal automation, and it's completely and fully automated. Uh, it's not just Drush, right? Like, there's so much going on there. And as my role, uh, as the project lead, my, I feel like it's my personal responsibility to make sure that the project itself remains vibrant and that the service remains completely free and well supported into the future. Right now, today, uh, this is not run by a company. There is no company, let me be clear. Uh, there is no corporate interest at all in this system, none. So therefore it has no bias and it will remain that way as long as I am doing this. That's what I want. One thing that's also critical is the openness, and openness doesn't just apply to the code being shared or whatever. It, it is used and runs entirely open source projects. 
all the systems are Linux based. It's using every uh, Apache and PHP, everything that, uh, that helps drive these systems and these tools. And if possible, if there's anything that this system solves or fixes in any of these open source projects, we contribute it back. So that's part of the philosophy. And we take that very seriously. So these motivations are not really just about why the project is useful uh, or the past. It really helps us to drive what this, uh, what the future of this tool and the, the vision that I have for it moving, you know, moving forward. Currently, Simply Test has two sponsors, and uh, Druid and Maloon. And uh, these these uh, sponsors have been around for years now. Uh, so I, you know, greatly appreciate that they've stuck with this system I, probably since its inception. Pretty sure I couldn't find exact details on that, but you know, they they had definitely been on the the Simply Test page for a very long time. Uh, but at a minimum, I know they have been around for quite a long time. Uh, but it is because of them that the service remains entirely free for people to use. They outright pay for servers. They just pay for them. And they give them to us to maintain and, and group. And that helps us to make sure that they, we don't have to raise any funds to keep the system alive. Uh, and it's been really great. Their um, sponsorship of those servers is just totally amazing, and they're super generous, and I cannot say thank you enough to those people. All right. So uh, I've kind of talked about exactly how the system came to be, but I want to describe where it is in the present. And this present state is going to share a little bit about the technical architecture and then a little bit about my personal thoughts about where the system is. I'll try to keep it brief. So the following image that you're seeing on the screen is kind of a high level flow. It's probably really hard to read from your seats, but I can talk through it a little bit. We really have kind of two types of systems uh, that are being affected here, while well, three that are in the diagram, I'll, I'll be clear. The first one is like the actual simply test, uh, uh, simply test me website. That's like what I call the web UI. That serves up the form. That loads projects for users. They pick their parameters. There's a whole bunch of metadata. And all that metadata gets pulled from Drupal.org. So we grab projects, we grab versions, and uh, we get patch information. All of that type of stuff gets pulled from Drupal.org. And uh, that's what gets loaded on the form so people can fill out what they want. And they hit, hey, load sandbox, and you get a new instance. What happens when they click the button is the web UI sends a request to the sandbox servers. Right now, Simply Test Me has only one sandbox server. It is built to support multiple sandbox servers that are load balanced across you know, the requests. So it has the technology to do it, but right now it's not leveraging it. And um, lastly, uh, once a sandbox server is selected, it goes and runs all the provisioning, the automation, everything that I talked about, and it returns uh, the Simply Test Me site redirects to that new instance that was provisioned with all of the Drupal stuff in place that people selected. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, just checking my notes here. Uh, there is a very clear limitation around 12 hours that we're supporting right now. We could expand that into the future, but right now we have one server, right? Uh, so we're not doing any load balancing, so we really can't be too ambitious about having um, you know, more time, for instance. Uh, there would be a major capacity issue. And you know, based on the configuration of these servers, we need really beefy servers. We need ones that are capable of supporting a ton of memory and a ton of CPU and computing power. So just to be fair, these things are not cheap. Yeah. Uh, so I want to do a quick like technical overview. So Simply Test uses a whole bunch of different tools uh, that our community provides. Uh, as I already said, uh, it pulls a bunch of uh, feed-related information from Drupal, Drupal.org that provides all the metadata around projects and project releases, and it also leverages things for patches, uh, so you can pull files down and, and uh, load them uh, with Git. We use Git to do that. 
Projects themselves are then managed either via Drush with Drupal 7 or through Composer with Drupal 8. And uh, Drush is also then leveraged to install the site and pass different parameters to the installation based on the automation of the database and all these other account credentials and things that we basically need to make sure that the user gets a good experience. Every instance that gets spawned is running on top of uh, a LAMP stack that is using virtual hosts. So every single uh, site that gets provisioned is a new virtual host entry added uh, into the system. There's a template for it. It gets you know, written and then uh, we reboot the Apache server and then boom, we have a new instance up. And uh, we do have a really cool setup where we have it provisionally set uh, to load different versions of PHP based on the major version of Drupal. So that is kind of cool, uh, but it's definitely a lot of work to maintain. Technical overview number two is there, uh, we do have a lot of communication channels and things that need to be uh, considered. We use HA proxy to manage all of the SSL termination across all of the, the different subdomains. So when someone clicks, you know, spawn a new site, it creates a new subdomain, the proxy gets reloaded and basically it points to the right thing on the sandbox server. Uh, An SSL termination at that point is actually really easy because we can have wildcard domains uh, and we only have to install one certificate for all of Simply Testing. So that works out really well, pretty cool. Uh, we use Let's Encrypt for SSL, so every three months we renew uh, getting a free, uh, free uh, certificate. Um, this is really neat, actually. So um, how many people in the room are familiar with LXC? Do you know what that is? Okay, so kind of. Uh, LXC was sort of the precursor for containers, which people consider to be Docker, right? They, there's an automatic. Uh, Docker is actually a, an abstraction on top of LXC, as I understand it. So one of the cool things, though, is that Simply Test has been using LXC for a very long time. It's using containers. Back before that was sexy, right? So hey, kudos to Patrick for you know his forethought there. Um, but it's used to basically run both of the servers, like the web UI and the sandbox server, and to run the proxy itself. And one of the beautiful things about it, it's not being, uh, the container-based technology is really not being used the way that you all might be thinking it's used. It's, um, it's not spinning up new containers every time a site gets provisioned. We have fixed containers that are running. But what that does is it actually gives us a really awesome infrastructure for uh, backing up the servers, for making images, for being able to copy those images into another server if we want to have another sandbox server. Uh, and we can basically download the backups to make sure that we're not, you know, the system doesn't explode someday, right? So that's really the infrastructure that it's providing right now, which is still really cool, by the way. Very forward thinking back, I think, when it was created. So kudos to him for that, that was awesome. And we use SSH tunneling to, to communicate between the web server when you click the button and it talks to the sandbox server. Uh, and under the hood, there's a whole bunch of bash scripts. And those bash scripts are what's in the drupal.org repo and they do all the provisioning and they move the configuration around, they run all the commands. Uh, and that's what basically triggers all of the automation uh, that's going on behind the scenes. So at a very high level, that is the kind of technology details that I wanted to provide is what the system is doing right now. I appreciate you all staying awake if you did for that section. Uh, but I wanted to offer now some personal thoughts on the current state of the service. You might find this a little more entertaining. Jimmy Fallon had a quote that I thought was like really funny, uh, probably one of a stand-up skit or something. Uh, and you know, I, you might think it's not related, but bear with me. <laughs> He says, uh, thank you, hard taco shells, for surviving the long journey from the factory to the supermarket to my plate and then breaking the moment I put something inside of you. Thank you. So right now, what's the analogy here? You're probably like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, the analogy here is we spend a significant amount of time maintaining the current system. We mostly do bug fixes. Uh, we try to make some minor enhancements when it's possible that we can make people's lives easier. But let me tell you, that is a significant challenge. It's a huge challenge. 
even the smallest of changes that we have prepared for weeks and we've tested as much as we possibly can has some edge case that ends up breaking the crap out of simply test. And that's even with the smallest of things, I could push a one line fix and it could just smoke, right? Uh, and I feel bad that it frequently frustrates certain people, you know, whenever we're <laughs> trying to do the right thing and help them out and then we end up, you know, causing something to break, like, oh, this distribution now won't load. I'm like, oh, crap. So, but we can't test everything, right? It's kind of impossible. Uh, but it even breaks just intermittently because <laughs> new versions of things come out that have changes in them, things of like core and different projects when they cut new releases or push new commits, and even versions of Drush, right? Something even that small <laughs> causes the whole thing to kind of crumble. It's a very <coughs> fragile state, uh, I'll just say. And every effort that we make to package up those hard shell tacos still doesn't really give us the results we want all the time. Most of it's good, but it is challenging. So this image pretty much accurately represents what I feel like you know, the current technical debt that's been built up over having a system for six or seven years now. Uh, that's kind of what it looks like. That's what my brain, you know, jumps to. And it currently supports, you know, so many different pieces of technology with Drupal 6, 7, and 8. We don't have support for 5 any longer. Uh, but it supports most distributions. Some of them are really custom and we can't support them yet or require some really high degree of um, complexity for us to build. Um, but every distribution today seems to be doing things differently. How can you support that? It's just impossible, right? Uh, and we're trying very hard to make a series of like incremental changes to maintain the same experience that we have and leverage new technology. But these technology changes that our community has seen, they're massive. They are really hard to scale that up and out. And so, um, and that's natural as things evolve for our community, by the way, that's, that's not a bad thing. But the result of where we're at today is really a, a pretty complex and a fairly fragile system right now. Uh, and everything is hard coded in the system, pretty much everything, like the virtual host configuration, the scripts, the drush commands, the, you know, the whole web UI, it's very, very fine tuned and a lot, a lot of coding involved. Um, and that's fine because it delivers a very refined and configured and automated experience to people. It is unique. So it's not unreasonable to think that it has this type of complexity or technical debt, but we really you know, are at a point where we've accrued a large amount of it. Uh, and it's very difficult to keep up with. It's hard to make changes. And I look forward to a future state where we can simplify some of these things. So the overall gut check right now, the service ad is fairly stable, right? You know, we're not seeing any major problems with it. Uh, you know, but right now we're basically keeping the lights on, right? That's all we're kind of doing, um, you know, and I don't think we're doing horribly with it. The system has a good bit of uptime. It's not, you know, it's not, a, it's not that bad, um, but the lights are on and they continue to stay on with reasonable maintenance. The system runs most of the time. There's a whole bunch of open issues in the issue queue of features that people want or bugs with specific things. We're working on them as we can, but you know, it's not, it's not perfect. Uh, I would much prefer, in my opinion, to be working on a future state uh, with the system right now instead of just keeping the lights on. I feel like there, uh, there are a lot of things that I want to share here in a few minutes that I think will help a lot. Um, but really all the maintenance stuff does come down to a lot of the things we talked about. Renewing SSL certificates, IP address changes, different versions of Drupal Drush, et cetera, and so on. Uh, but I will say, it, it fascinates me it's both amazing and somewhat a little bit surprising that this system has had such longevity. How many systems do you know out there that are running, you know, have been running for seven years with basically the same infrastructure? Ah, that's a lot, right? I mean, it's a lot for me. You know, I, I look at like banking software or higher education systems that have been around for 20 some plus years, right? Those are like the, the mental, you know, models that I jump to. Uh, and one final thing, I do want to thank uh, Greg Boggs for his help with the maintenance with me. Uh, he's been really great of bouncing ideas off of and, and helping me out. Uh, so thank you to him if he listens to this talk. You can, you can hear that. All right, so let's get to the fun part. 
what is the future state? What does the future look like for Simply Test? I want to share what my vision is for this. You all are getting a very early preview on some things that I have plans for. We might be talking years out, we might be talking months out, but I'll try my best to, to give some rough ideas and, and where the system is going. Um, yeah, so I focused my vision on a few key areas, and these are things that I really want to make sure that we're emphasizing with the project. Uh, first, I want to make sure that more people are able to pitch in to the system. Uh, so based on how customized it is today and where the infrastructure is, people really can't easily submit patches right now. They just can't do it. Like, you know, I have to deploy it for them. They can't test it on their system. They can't do anything. All the code is open, but they just can't do anything with it, right? So how could you submit a patch if, you know, you really can't test it? It's kind of hard, right? So. I want to try to get a little closer to being able to do that, where people can test things much more easily and have you know the right tools and the right help in place to do that. Uh, second, um, right now we have two servers. So we need a way to scale that. And we need, um, for sustainability, we really need to be able to have the ability to pay for services and tools that we need as we need them. It's becoming majorly uh, obvious that having only having two production systems that are sponsored is not sustainable. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Third, we need to modernize and give the technology a facelift. We just have to. Um, there's so many cool innovative things that even people in this room are doing that we can take advantage of and simplify the work in the process. Most notably, we need to move to Drupal 8. We just need to. Uh, and we need to make sure that we're prioritizing a less fragile infrastructure so that people can work on it and they can feel confident that they're not going to break the system. Fourth, I want to bring some energy back to the project. Um, I want to give it a facelift in terms of the look and feel. I want to revitalize it. I want to modernize how it looks, the design of it. Uh, and I'll talk about um, the details for that. So there's an African proverb that you've probably heard before. If you want to go fast, you can go alone. If you want to go farther, you go together. And that's been what has been driving me for this. And right now, there's a massive disconnect with this system and that philosophy. Simply Test right now helps new Drupal users you know, become familiar with using Drupal. And it helps build that knowledge through use, through the, you know, using the service and the system and doing all of that. Yet, no one contributes to the project today, besides Greg and I. No one. So something seems kind of off to me about that, where I don't think there is something right about that right now. So why does Simply Test have to stop it's serving those who want to use Drupal. We need contributors to remain vibrant because this is critical to the service staying alive. So the Simply Test system presents a tremendous opportunity for any person to also give back to the community through code contribution, right? So I'd like to formally announce my desire to create an inclusion program that helps new contributors to learn about contributing back to a project, to all the various aspects of this system, and give back in a meaningful way. I'm in the beginning phases of planning this program to help evolve Simply Test. Uh, I will be looking for and recruiting new community members and potentially those that are underprivileged and want the opportunity to learn, be mentored, and grow into a career doing this. Uh, that's what I would really like to see. I feel like it's a good opportunity for that. And I'm trying to explore how we can provide financial assistance, resources, books, and maybe even computers to help them to be a part of this program. I'm going to be recruiting subject matter experts in all the areas of design and UX, DevOps, development, and systems administration to help give these people the right support that they need to be effective. 
Uh, and honestly, I want more than anything to make sure that this system gives people a great opportunity and a unique one that they can grow and better position themselves for a career in this field. I like that. So this will help the platform to meet my ultimate vision of scaling contributors uh, and help more people in the process. I think there's a good fit there. Uh, there'll be a blog post forthcoming about that. Uh, I want to get some more details in place and try to learn you know, exactly how to do this and reach out to the right people uh, to get things lined up properly. Right here, zero dollars. I think it's amazing at what has been accomplished with no money exchanged. None, right? The only people paying money are the, the sponsors right now, the servers, which again, they're awesome. And uh, they pay for that and they just hand it over to us, so that's great. And that's, that's worked so far. Uh, but the rest of the magic happens through open source contributions and free labor. Literally everything, right? Uh, but only having a server level sponsorship is expensive. People can't, you know, any individual or whatever can't really pay the $80 to $100 plus a month that it requires to pay for a server. That's not realistic. And right now, I'm actually paying out of pocket for two development servers that mirror the web UI and the sandbox UI that I just finished last week. It took me a long time to get that set up. Uh, I know, um, you know, that as project lead, I have to make an investment, and I'm happy to do that. But I think that we could look to scale this out. Um, one thing that I've also paid for is I have paid for other very important contributions to this system that I have felt have added value to either improve the service or move us closer to being able to get our future vision forward. Uh, and I paid for that because it's important, right? And I don't believe people should have to work for free all the time. That's not what I'm trying to do. <laughs> But again, there is no money here, right? There's none. And so we need a way to sustain this service and really to help us grow contributors and grow a uh, contribution. So the first thing uh, that I want to announce, or the next thing I should say, uh, is around the Simply Test nonprofit. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But I've heard from so many people that they want to be able to make, you know, small donations. They want to be able to say, here's five bucks to help your cause, right? And maybe they want to do that a couple times a year or something like that. Uh, we also get approached a lot by camps because camps want our system to be up so that people can participate in sprints and they can be able to do, you know, contributions easier. And they, they want some set of like, hey, can you really make sure that the system's running good this weekend, right? Uh, so, you know, and they've offered funds to try to make that happen or just say like, hey, thanks, here's some cash, right? But, you know, there's no place to give cash to right now. There is no tool. There is no utility to do that. Even heavy system users, uh, people that use the system all the time, really just want to be able to say, hey, thanks, and here's some cash. You should be good. And I want to make that happen. I also want to make sure it's done really thoughtfully because I don't want any individual or camp or a company to just think that they're giving me money. Uh, it's not going into somebody's pocket, and I want there to be a proper legal entity in place to make sure that they feel confident in doing that. There's very little value right now in investing more in the current system, but the money that I'm talking about would help to cover expenses, pay for individuals to do some work in the system uh, for certain specialized needs, especially around design and UX, right? Uh, and we could help to pay for some of the other infrastructure costs around um, you know, other servers for development or new servers to test a new system for Drupal 8 instead of having to try to move it forward very carefully, right, in the same production environment it's running right now. Um, and we want to, I want to try to like evolve it thoughtfully too where we can start doing some user testing and making sure that we actually are providing a simple experience. These things cost money. So how do we do that? Well, we need to make sure we can get donations and I think the nonprofit will be a really good structure to explore moving that forward. I know a lot of camps uh, are looking to do that sort of thing as well for their local organizations. Uh, one thing that's also critical is I think donations could help to fund part of the inclusion program. 
Uh, so things like books and machines and even stipends that we could pay people to say, hey, thanks, this isn't a lot of money, but thank you for your work. Provisioning platforms. In terms of modernization, right, the current system right now is running totally wildly refined and customized versions of Apache, and MySQL, and PHP. And our community has already jumped and done leaps and bounds into all these new cool container-based technologies. Systems like Doxel, DDEV, Lagoon, Provision, and more provide uh, really elegant you know, ways to abstract a single instance of a Drupal site on a local system mostly today, right? Uh, but the key concept here of provisioning that site and tearing it down is exactly the same operation as what happens on Simply Test. There's a lot of parity. So in partnership with Hook42, my employer, I'm announcing a provisioning modernization effort that will research what is the best system that would re serve as the replacement for all of the hand-coded configuration that exists right now in Simply Test. We could then use any server and run it on top of that infrastructure. So this will give us a huge advantage in maintaining or reducing the technical debt and simplifying the current architecture. The research will explore a lot of different factors. We're going to look at things like configurability. I want to look at performance and efficiency. I want to look and make sure that the platform is extensible. And I want to make sure that there is good community support and a willingness to help the program should it be needed. The underlying dependencies needed to run the Docker-based platforms are also a big consideration of making sure that the system is easy to maintain, right? So. All of those things will be used to weigh and evaluate different tools that we could use to choose which platform uh, we want to use for Simply Test. I also desire to make sure that this is not biased. <laughs> I want this to be as fair, I want it to be open, I want people to know that we are not bound to using any one of these tools. But I all want to recognize that they're all doing great things in the space. John, by the way, I did not find any image for your thing. It would be up there, just saying. Uh, but Simply Test is a community-based tool, and this research is not intended to outright throw our weight behind any company or anything in that respect. But uh, there is definitely a benefit to using it. The result should be a significantly uh, more straightforward architecture that helps us to maintain the system, still using open source tools, still using a lot of the automation that we have in place today with bash scripts and so on and so on, uh, but it'll be great. The next piece is around Drupal 8, so we will definitely, and we are, building a brand new web uh, UI in Drupal 8. It has so much support for entities and improved web services and, uh, and a simplified development approach using object orientation that honestly will make the code that we have radically easier <laughs> to maintain. It's just, we're gonna get it up to speed with common PHP best practices and we're gonna do it. Uh, the other nice thing is that now that Drupal is doing the minor release cycles with 8.5, 8.6, 8.7, this is actually helping us to be a little bit more future-proof and Dr uh, Drupal 9 will be a roll forward of whatever the next minor release is, right? So we know that we're building something that isn't going to be going away uh, anytime in the near future, but we'll definitely be having new features that we could take advantage of very easily as the system continues to evolve. So I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, and if we really do desire to give something uh, to people to learn and benefit from, it makes sense for us to do so in Drupal 8. Uh, the modern conventions are things that people really want to learn, and they don't just apply to Drupal. They can apply to other tools that are in the PHP ecosystem. And we want to make sure that we're not limiting people uh, from that whole ecosystem and from robbing them of opportunities to learn something relevant. So the current web UI will be totally rewritten in Drupal 8, but we're not going to be changing a whole lot of the ar underlying architecture for the sandbox servers, aside from the provisioning tools of DDEV or Doxel or Provision or anything along those lines. We'll still be using SSH. We'll still be running a set of bash scripts. That stuff will still kind of be in place. 
And so we'll make a new distribution and we'll start the architecture fairly fresh. And we're gonna try to keep uh, feature parity on this. So please give me feedback if you have it. I'm definitely getting low on time here. Um, we do wanna build a brand new user experience. Uh, there's an open issue right now in the issue queue where I created uh, a sketch image. It talked about different behaviors and things like that. Uh, but we want simple, you know, simply test to be simple, right? And so we have to keep the uh, experience consistent and easy to use. So I talked, uh, I proposed this as a way to do that, uh, which basically keeps most of the features the same, but there's a couple nice little behaviors and enhancements that we would use to, you know, kind of modernize it just a little bit. But with any luck, we'll have an even better, more usable, stronger tool that people can use and benefit from. And once we do have some technical bit in place, we could start some user testing to see how it uh, goes. We also have a brand new design. We talked about the look and feel, and I talked about paying uh, for that. And with the help of Anna Laura Koto, who is a designer in the Drupal community, we have a fresh, brand new logo. We have a fresh, brand new design of what the system is going to look like into the future here. And it's going to bring the new web UI to life. This is what it's going to be. Uh, kind of revitalize it a bit. So it's really exciting, right? This is the first actual redesign of the system. <laughs> so I want to modernize it with a nice, clean, sleek look and feel. Uh, and I think she did an incredible job at trying to bring some of the ideas I had to life. So uh, thanks to Anna for doing that. Iris uh, Ibekwe from Civic Actions is currently working on a Drupal theme to bring the uh, new designs to life. So she's working to integrate that in Drupal 8, and she's leveraged this new design, so I'm really happy about that, and she's contributing that in her spare time, so I'm very grateful to her for doing that, and I appreciate the, the work of these two amazing people that are in the community. I also printed out stickers. <laughs> I have them here. If you want one, come find me. Uh, we probably don't have time for a total open forum or anything. We're probably right at the time box, right? Yep. Okay. And uh, But if, you, if there's anything that you want to see, if you feel like you have any feedback on things that I've shared, please certainly let me know. And I thank all of you beautiful people. I appreciate all the organizers and the attendees here uh, that make this event incredibly special. So thank you so much. Appreciate it.